Hello there, this is Philip Nylinger, KA4KOE, with another episode of Electromagnetic Mischief on this third day of January 2025. And Happy New Year to all of you. I'm going to show a little better video of this 40, 20, 15, and 10 multi-band delta loop, which I've been developing in coordination with Tim, N9SAB. We think we're going to go with a 2010 version because the 40 through 10 is just just too big. So I'm going to start with the feed point. You've got to have a balance choke near the feed point. This is a prototype N9SAB one-to-one -one choke balance in the what he calls the turtle enclosure. These work very well. And here is the N9SAB four-to-one balance. You can make your own, of course, but we've been working on this product for a while. The actual wire, after you take the velocity factor into account, we calculated it for 7.125 megahertz. That was about 141 feet. And after I was done cutting, about 138 feet. And that takes into the velocity factor of this 22 gauge UL1007 wire. So here's the center support. A spider beam 12 meter or 40 foot long pole that goes up and you may be able to see the wire up at the top. Now looking at the antenna here with the one support at the end and the other over here broadside on 40 meters is looking that way and this way. The upper bands the harmonics the pattern gets a little funky but due to the characteristics this is a balanced antenna it's quiet. Here's the other end support, which is one of these four foot tractor supply insulated fence posts. And this is allowed to move freely so you can adjust the tension and the droop uh, in the middle of the antenna. The also the front, the top support is also floating so you can adjust it. You want to try to get this as symmetrical as you can. Now, given that the pole is 40 foot tall, we kind of have to make some compromises in the pattern. The most important thing to remember when building one of these is you have to get this middle wire off the ground. Uh, I'd say at least four foot, which is, you know, about top of this first section of the spider beam, it's the top of that, but I move it up a little bit. If you get the bottom wire too close to the ground, it'll start to affect your SWR. Some people will say that, well, you know, the, the corner is not exactly the best place to feed one of these. And that's entirely correct. However, with this light gauge wire, this 22 gauge wire, if you, if you bring the, uh, the actual correct feed point down a quarter way from the top, this wire is not strong enough to pull the droop out of it and feed it with coax. It's just mechanically doesn't work very well. From the corner right here, you get pseudo vertical polarization. The pattern is not symmetrical, but it works good enough. Now, the other, the other feed option is to come over here and put a two to one balun right here because the feed point of penis drops down to about 100 ohms. The problem with that is what you essentially get is a cloud warmer antenna. Now with the feed on the corner, the impedance is around 200 ohms. So you use a four to one. Now, there's some theory involved with this and some people say, well, that's not correct, that's not correct. Well, low band AXing by ON4UN goes into this quite a bit of detail. With, with delta loops and other types of loops. And uh, so this, with the loop being closer to the ground like this, the impedance drops. So it's not quite what the theory is, but it lines up with ON4UN's research. I find this antenna works very well. Yes, there's more effort to put up, but I've been working uh, contacts on 20 meter sideband and CW today and people are amazed that I'm only running 20 watts with my G90. 
But like I said, I'm a big project guy. Well, that's it for now. Y'all have a good day. Take care. This is KA4KOE, concluding this episode of Electromagnetic Mischief 73.